why are we so sensitive to flaws in human-like forms? Well, there are a number of possible theories for explaining this. One is based on expectation violation, the violation of human norms. Near human forms elicit our model of a human other, but the model's predictions mismatch the stimuli. It doesn't measure up. So, for example, we could have a kind of cross-modal mismatch when you see a hand that looks like a real hand, but you touch it and it feels cold and clammy. It feels hard and mechanical. You could have temporal mismatches. For example, the android may produce very fluid movements and suddenly it jerks. You have some kind of give or feedback in the system. There's also issues of contingency. It may behave very naturally, but it asks you a question and it takes too long to give a response when you speak back to it. That seems unnatural. So this is another way of violating human norms. Another issue about androids is that they're very strange. We didn't grow up or evolve in a world that had androids, that had these objects that are actually electromechanical but look like human beings. So they're on a kind of category boundary. It's in this liminal area between human and machine. And because they look like us, they could call our personal identity into question. If they're really effective at imitating people, then it could make us wonder, well, aren't we all just machines? Does that leave space for the soul, for example? There are also explanations from evolutionary aesthetics. There are norms of physical beauty, youth, vitality, expressiveness, bilateral symmetry, skin quality, bodily and facial proportions. These norms are correlated with fertility. Human beings have evolved to perceive those who are likely to be more fertile as more beautiful based on these norms, because our ancestors would have higher reproductive success. So there are some examples of the importance of, for example, facial proportions or bodily proportions. Women with large breasts and narrow waists are rated as more attractive and, three to four, and are three to four times more likely to conceive. Male bilateral symmetry is a better predictor of strength of female orgasm than any other factor, including being in love. And women find a very masculine face more attractive during ovulation than at other parts of their menstrual cycle. So it seems like when they're most ready to conceive, then they're really looking for a mate who is most masculine appearance but maybe he doesn't make the best father. Then there's also a Rosen's theory of disgust. The more closely an organism is related to human beings genetically, the more likely it is to carry transmissible diseases. According to Rosen, disgust is an evolved cognitive mechanism to motivate human beings to avoid infection. Leprosy and human fe feces, for example, elicit disgust. Diseases of plants and other animals are less disgusting or not disgusting at all. So if you have a robot that is in a state of partial disassembly or that is damaged, we don't find it disgusting because the probability of disease transmission seems low. However, if the robot looks like a person, well, at a subconscious perceptual level, we could be fooled and feel disgusted by it because it's like a human being. And so we might, on a subconscious level, perceive that there is a risk of disease transmission, even if we weren't consciously thinking of that as being in the realm of possibilities. Another explanation has to do with terror management theory. All animals fear death. We're the only animals that are aware of the fact that death is certain. And when we're reminded of that, it can be disturbing, both at a conscious and co subconscious level and affect our behavior in many ways.